Excuse me, what about me? What do I get? Hey, you're listening to 200 Proof Gospel, the podcast. I'm Craig D'Onofrio. Who are you? I am Pastor Troy New Year. He is. And, of course, there's the other guy. Yay, it's me. Oh. It's Pastor Mark Sell, our Savior Lutheran Church. And oh. Oh. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. Were you saying something? <laughs> oh, he gave up now. <laughs> Our Savior Lutheran Church, Missouri. Oh, okay. Our Savior Lutheran Church, Missouri. This, this is going to be a real long show if I keep doing that. But yeah, are, are we supposed to announce where we're from? By the but way, it'll be it'll be funny. Oh, well, Mark thinks that he yeah, needs I, to. I love that. Yes, we were from the Promised Land of Cleveland. Of Cleveland, right? yeah. Yes. And Mark's down in the heart of the beast, St. Louis. Oh, that's okay. right. Nice and sweaty down here. Is it's it? very pleasant here. I think it's uh, lower 70s. Sunny. It's, uh, it's a brutal 74 here. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, my wife just found a little baby fawn out in the backyard. Mm-hmm. And uh, since Rufus has gone to doggy heaven, we now have a new buddy named Louie. So now everybody's caught up. He's a Labrador, and he's quite the fella. So everybody now knows what, what's going on with me. What's going on with you, Troy? Who, uh, you know, not not much. Actually. Do you have another kid or anything? Uh, got no, a, no more so kids. I, I, you didn't, I am, you didn't make however, it a full dozen. I am gaining a uh, a new daughter in law. Oh, uh, well, in a sense, or, you are getting a new kid. Yes, yeah, or or as a, a good friend of mine likes to call him, a daughter in love. So, uh, gaining oh, that one, brother. I just, that, I, <laughs> I just threw oh, a little in my mouth. I it's, thought that was sweet. Come on, it is very sweet. Yes. <laughs> So shout out to my new daughter. Mark, should we kick him out of the club here? (laughs) (laughs) All right. What's new in your world, Mark? Oh, uh, well. (laughs) We're getting. (laughs) We are getting ourselves ready for our vacation Bible school. So that'll be coming up July uh, 5th. Starts uh, July 16th. And so... That'll that'll go very well. We also do an adult BBS that starts Sunday night, July 15th. And we have a former professor from River Forest. His name is John Rhodes, and he will be he will be teaching our adult Bible Bible uh, vacation Bible school. John Rhodes, we went to seminary together, that guy and me. Mm-hmm. Very nice. That's about right. Yeah. Very, very nice. Well tell him He's I said finishing hi. up his PhD and so yeah. Well, if we're doing all that, uh, VBS at uh, at uh, where, where's my church? St. James Lutheran Church in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a blank. Is the week of blah, July sixteenth? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it will be in the evening, and uh, that's all I have to say about that. It's free. Come on out, St. James Cleve dot org. You can find out all about it. Ah, see, I went up to you there, Mark. Hey, we are still in our conversation about baptism, and uh, last time we we got uh, what we we actually made progress, which is rare for us. Uh, but we have an email. Should should we? In, the email ties into our topic du jour. So, sh- oh, Troy, I'm shocked you didn't remind me about the toast. Oh, please, the toast. Yes, the toast. Raise raise your glass, your iPad, your phone, whatever you have handy. Here we go. To that washing that declares us blameless and pure, that will cause us to stand without shame on that day. Amen. Amen. Wow. I just bumped that fader way too much there. All right. So anyway, um, (laughs) hopefully this isn't all distorted now. Ah, The joys of engineering. (laughs) Okay. uh, Let's go back to the email. Now I need to turn me down a little bit. Master distillers, do you think some families get their children baptized because grandparents and other family members push push the issue? Yes. Yes, thank yes. God. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, Ooh, that's a better answer than mine, Mark. Yes, thank God. 
Yes. Yes. Mark. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. A couple times a year, I, I thank the grandparents and mothers for not for uh, for continuing to bug their children to get their kids baptized. Okay. So we follow up on this. At a baptism, <laughs> the parents and godparents take a vow to raise a child up in a Christian home by attending church. Is this happening? So how often does someone get junior baptized because grandma is pestering them and then the kid vanishes for eternity? Well, I don't know about eternity. Well, eternity in your congregation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> baptized never to hear from again. <laughs> right, right. right. Um, I would say the vast majority of times that this is the, the scenario... There's not a whole lot of follow-up. Every now and then, though, you do have the grandparents who are very involved, and they make a point of bringing the kid to church. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So that's yes, that's what we do with my, you know, with our grandson. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was that funny look all about, Troy? Oh, I I thought it was a little bit hot there. You're so hot. (laughs) Yes. That's all. Sorry, we're we're talking levels again here. Uh, Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are the grandparents who get involved and stay involved, and rightfully so, and actually uh, aid uh, their own children in raising of their grandchildren. But uh, let's face it, the majority of times that this is the scenario, that's not the case. That's more the exception than the rule, I would say. Well, and even... Uh, e- even then, though, there's still an important reality that the grandparents um, see the importance of baptism. Yes, absolutely right. And I, I always default to it's still handing the faith down. Do you know what I mean? It's as as frustrating as it is to see parents get so busy that church becomes secondary, but it you know that's the the gray side of it then is well i'm still glad to see the kids being pushed by grandma right. and yeah. then bringing them and and always taking the long view and i think that's the beauty of the church the church always understands the long view is just as important as the short view well it it really brings home what we read in the small catechism in the uh, the third question on uh, baptism. How can water do such great things? And Luther's response is is just as you said, certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things, along with the faith, which trusts this word God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism, but with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. How many times do we see this, though, also? And and this goes to what Troy's talking about also. The kids baptize as a baby, and as an adult, they start coming to church, and they say, well, I was baptized as a baby, but, you know, I didn't grow up as a Christian, and now I've become a Christian, I should be baptized. And you say, no, 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 you, you that baptism took. You know, that's why you're here now, yeah, yeah. Is, is that baptism took. You don't need to be rebaptized. There's the objective reality of what happens in baptism, and that's what that, that third part uh, of the explanation to the baptism explains, that this is God's work, something that he does uh, that does not depend upon us in any way. Right. It's Right. It's still true regardless of what we go through. It's yes. that truth that's outside of us. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Okay, so uh, Jan here continues on and says, is it possible if a child is baptized that they don't believe? So, yes, the gift can always be rejected, right? It's baptism, God's word comes by way of gift, and we can always reject the gift, but the gift is given. And there, there may come a time in that person's life when they stop rejecting the gift and, and they uh, receive with joy. That that gift that's already given them. Troy, you seem to have a Baptist uh, upset look on your face A here. Baptist upset look? Maybe it's Pentecostal. <laughs> so, like, I get those confused. <laughs> uh, I can't even make, make a joke about that now. I'm busy. Okay. Anyway, um, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 
I don't know. You know, certainly the gift language is good and helpful, but I think in this particular case, maybe more of an identity language would be helpful as well. That in the same way that, say, my children uh, are part of my family, that is part of their identity, although they may grow to a certain age where they say, I don't wish to be identified with this anymore, yet that does not change who they are in reality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a very good point. That uh, you know, when, once again, you you look at that scenario that uh, someone has been given this identity. You can run away from your family, yeah, but you're still part of the family. But does that mean though? In, and this is where we start to get a little worried about this kind of thing, because you could easily go the Calvinist route of irresistible grace that one cannot reject salvation that's given them freely. Yes, we could go down that route. Is that what you're, are you, are you inviting us to go down this route? No, well, I'm just saying with what you, the, the way that, the way that that's presented, if, if you are given this identity in your baptism and you hold that identity, if you like it or not, uh, okay. You know, one can renounce his membership in his family. Yes, yeah, okay. But, you know, so part of the Calvinistic uh, emphasis there is, is the whole tulip thing. So not just irresistible grace, but the perseverance of the saints in grace. Uh, uh, all that stuff all ties together. And I don't think as Lutherans we necessarily hold to uh, all of those points. Uh, we, we like certain aspects of each one. But, right, uh, the, tu- the tulip is a system in itself. Yes. And, and I think where Lutherans overcome that is because we get the distinction along gospel. Ooh, good point. And the, and the distinction along gospel will let us answer the law side, and it will also let us answer the gospel side. <clears throat> otherwise, otherwise, we fall into the trap of thinking, well, okay, the baptism is good, but if I don't do anything with it, it's not going to be good. Well, no, that's the confusion of the long gospel. So you got to let, it's so hard to let the gospel stand as gospel and to let the law stand as law. And of course the, the real issue becomes the individual in applying those two things. So on, on the one hand, people, when they find themselves getting beat up completely by the law, and what's going on in their lives, and the fact that we live in a sinful world, and they're and they're decaying, um, it doesn't change the pure gospel message that God still called you by name in your baptism. Now, I, I want to be sure that I'm clear on what I'm saying here. Also, Please. I don't believe that you can. You're the heretic in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> now you threw me off my game, and I can't even. Okay, you wanted to be clear is, as to is, your heresy. Uh, now, think. now let me be clear. Let me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that you can lose your salvation. I, I lose my keys. I, I don't lose my salvation. Uh, I don't just misplace it one day, or or okay. uh, even if I wander off from it, I haven't lost it, but I can forfeit it. I, I can I can fire it, and and, uh, and that would have to be unto the point of death that yeah. one would reject this gift or or his family membership. Uh, yes, unto so. the point of death. So it's not like oh I sinned I got to start all over you know Alcoholics Anonymous Christianity here you know kind of thing you know, start my twelve steps over again. Okay, right. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. So you know I say it this way that we can't lose our salvation, but you can actively throw it away. Right. Yeah. So if you so, jettison all of that. So you right. can send your way up to the railing at the Grand Canyon there, but you have to actually climb over the fence and jump <laughs> when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, you you have to willfully reject that gift, that, that well, salvation. Well, would that not be the ultimate renunciation of your baptism? Yes. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. So let's continue on. Jan, thank you. You've, you're giving us good fodder here to talk about. Uh, let's see. Um, was the thief on the cross next to Jesus baptized? 
It, it, but then Jan finishes, who knows? It really doesn't matter. Um, well, it does, in a it sense, can. and it doesn't, in a sense. Yeah, uh, the, the who knows question is the, is the right question. <laughs> right. You know, right. <laughs> certainly could have been baptized by John. Yes, that's one theory. Yeah. Uh, Mark, right. any thoughts? It's, it, yeah, it's one of those things where you... It, it's the art of letting God's Word stand so that you don't wander into questions that none of our business. Right. Living in living business. in the tension. Yeah, cuz yeah, you yeah. don't want to you don't want to fall you don't want to fall into the trap where you have to take it to its logical conclusion and saying so therefore eh, it doesn't matter if he was baptized. Well, yeah, it does cuz that's a rejection of God's call to baptism. So you always want to be careful of that because then then it becomes too easy to fall off the other side of the horse and say, so that's why baptism really isn't necessary. And then, as we've said in prior shows, well, yeah, it is necessary. Yeah, I, I will say that in, in the story of the thief on the cross, uh, baptism is not a part of that discussion. Right. It wasn't the issue. Right, right. But that does issue. come up. It, it is a question that often is raised when it comes to the, to the thief on the cross. Yes. But, and, we, and we look to that Mark 16 where... Uh, it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe, you know, is condemned. And and so, you know, of course, there is salvation apart from baptism. And we talked about this, you know, the guy who's driving to church to get baptized and goes off a cliff and died, you know, oh, no, he's in hell. No, he's we, not. We he's talked not. about that. I thought we did, didn't we? Sure. In a previous program? Previous, yes. Okay. No, not today. But Right. Anyway. So, anyway. so there is salvation apart from baptism, but if you reject baptism, you're rejecting the Word of God, and so you're putting yourself in peril that way. So, uh, you know, if, if you are not baptized through no fault of your own, if you happen to be on a desert island by yourself right now, and you know you need to be baptized and there's no one there to baptize you, uh, you know, it's not like you're going to hell. Well, hold on. If you are on a desert island right now, by all means, please use your iPhone to make a phone call to get off the desert island instead uh, of listening to this podcast. The iPhone was damaged in the wreck, and you can only receive content. You can't. It, you have that to is understand. Oddly specific. Have damage. you never watched Gilligan's Island? Do you not know how <laughs> things work? <laughs> they had no iPhones on Gilligan's Island. They had all sorts of technology. He had a professor they, that could do crazy things. He had coconut things. technology. He made batteries out of coconuts. I mean, you, you if you can make a battery out of a coconut, you can make a radio to call for help. Okay. But can you make a baptismal font out of a coconut? Yes, you could, actually. Okay. Oh, touche. Yeah. There's plenty okay. of water if you're out on that island. <laughs> yes. Salt water, fresh water, that doesn't make a difference. Sea, sea water works, right? But it must be. Because I was water. baptized in the ocean, so. I, I think so. I think good, so. Good, good, good. So you're not saying be... we have to use distilled water? <sighs> no. Uh, okay, I think we went way too far down the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, what, what I gather, though, that what we're doing is we're making that transition that Luther makes in his catechism between the objective reality of, uh, of baptism and uh, in our daily life in it. Is that where we're headed? I'm not sure. Um, and, and and, I'm, I'm and just that's, going through that's, Jan's letter here. So. Okay. <laughs> Mark, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, and that's why the his, in the small catechism, the all four parts make the whole. You can't just focus on one part or the other, because as we move, you know, when we move into the fourth section, well, that's the whole point. So Jan yeah. makes the point that Jesus says to the thief, today you shall see me in paradise. And so, yeah. you know, there, there's the promise there. It's all good. Um, then she says, well, I noticed that... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, go ahead. There we go, though. Jesus makes a promise, and that promise is good. Yeah. Yeah. So what promise does he make in baptism? The same promise. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. So, and and I think the giving of the Holy Spirit is a huge part of this as well. It's the renewal by the Holy Spirit um, that also becomes part of the baptismal promises. 
because he poured out, Christ poured out on us generously, the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, so it's, 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 always, it, it's always the challenge to keep the whole thing there, even though we keep going back for the different touchstones of the four different parts. Am I making any sense? It's the challenge to keep the, per- the particular and the whole together. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's fair to ask if you're making any sense and then keep rolling on. With yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> 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 then Jan makes a note saying that uh, I noticed that the day of confirmation is just a renewal of uh, baptismal vows. Yes. Uh, confirmation <laughs> yeah. is a man-made device that says that you are the Daki Moe Fanaroi, those who have been tested and approved. I always like saying Donkey Boy fan, right? But anyway. Wow, okay. I heard Donkey Boy fan, or I, I don't know. <laughs> Don, well, that's, you're the Donkey Boy, but still. You're the Donkey Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is saying you are no longer uh, one who is considered unlearned in the church. You, you now know the basics of the Christian faith. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but you know what I like about that, though? Yeah. Is the connection there. Yeah, baptism. The baptismal right. right. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, in effect, the confirmant is saying, yeah, I am baptized, and I stand in that baptism. Uh, I'm not, this is not a brand new thing that's happening in my life, but uh, but God bringing me to um, a fuller realization of it. And And the whole idea then leads into, from that Titus passage, having been justified. And so the whole picture then comes <clears throat> comes together in this um, perfect tense of you are now in the state of already being baptized, already being justified. So the justification actually takes place. It leads you then into the declaration from God himself that you now have received this wonderful big picture of forgiveness that God has already accepted for the whole world. If you have questions like Jan's or different questions, you can email us at 200proofgospel at gmail.com. Thanks, Jan. You offered us a lot of fodder to talk about. And that text that you were just talking about, Mark, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that Having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Titus 3, 5 through 8 uh, in the Catechism Explanations. It's such a simple statement about the entire Christian life into eternity. Indeed. It's gorgeous because it walks you right into heaven. Very good. So, certainly not the water, but the Word of God in and with the water does these things, along with faith which trusts this Word of God in the water. For without God's Word, the water is just plain water, no baptism, but with the Word of God it is baptism, that is a life-giving water, rich in grace and washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says in Titus. And we just read that Titus passage. Yeah, but I totally read what you read. 15 minutes ago. I know, but I'm just trying to get us on track here <laughs> so that we can move on to number four. Thank you. Good, Yay! Trans- good transition. So that's that's what I was trying to do. But I see now. Yes. So I, as we move into number four, so the f- we're about to give it all up because we're about to say that, bapti- that baptism is just an indication. <sighs> what? Sim- what? Mark. Mark. Okay. Okay, Rupert. Uh, fourth part, <laughs> what does such baptizing with water indicate, Troy? Oh, uh, well, Craig, it indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever and ever and ever. Amen. Mark, where is this written? <laughs> You know, I don't think it's really part of God's word. Oh, no, wait, it's right here. Romans chapter 6. Oh, <laughs> it's gotten old now. It's just, you know, I'm glad you love the family guy so much, Mark, because I'm kind of falling into that 
that habit of once things are overdone, then you need to do it some more just so that you can make sure that it's good and overdone. It, at, when it, at the point when it's overdone, you keep pushing through till it becomes classic. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. All right, Mark. Uh, I won't, I won't do it this time. Channel. Yeah. Where, where is this written, Mark? Oh, Romans chapter 6. Romans 6, 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. A new life. You know, this is, it, it's amazing. Having come from outside of Lutheranism and for 26, 27 years of my life, this was the last thing that fell was baptism for me before I could become a Lutheran. I fought this for like two and a half years. And to to see the text, whenever you look up baptism, it's really clear and simple. And and I look back and I say, what was I thinking? How could I have missed this? I mean, it's just so so obvious. You know, here in Romans, Paul's very clear. In baptism, we're buried with Christ and raised to eternal life. And and how, you know, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. How are you? How are you a disciple? You're baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, and yet. The vast majority of American Christendom, or at least Protestantism, flat out rejects these clear passages. It's mind-boggling. Yeah. So, so what was your issue then? Was it just that indoctrination? Uh, indo- well, okay, but I mean, in terms of the daily dying and rising, did you believe that you had this one conversion experience? Then you had to get better and better and better from there. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's actually a big part of it. That progressive. Uh, it's not progressive sanctification, it's progressive justification. Uh, It's very Roman Catholic in reality, because you aren't necessarily saved. You you are being saved, but you aren't necessarily saved, or... But you must prove it each and every day. Yes, and, and better yet, God has wiped your slate clean, and now you need to, through your good works, keep that slate nice and clean. Thank you, Nancy Pelosi, and the divine spark that lives in us all that we got to keep trying to get to. Wow. How, how did we get Nancy Pelosi? I have no idea. Is she a theologian now? No, she, she cites it all the time in her Roman Catholic uh, divine spark. Oh, yeah. Wait, it, isn't wait, she wait. like pro abortion and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's beside the point. I've never heard it. <laughs> so she talks about the scintilla, really? The, the divine spark? Uh, it, absolutely. I was, it, it, I was unaware amazing, of that. Because, uh, as a matter of fact, I kind of brought that up with the Bible study recently that, you know, why does she keep bringing that up? Well, because she's a hardcore Catholic. And the apparently not spark, that hardcore. Well, when it, she's using that, well, she is. It's, it's a classic example of what she practices in her personal life versus what she believes in policy and the government. But anyway, that's another story. However, I guess we're all kind of guilty wow. of some of these things. She constantly brings up the divine <laughs> spark in all of us. So therefore, we have to treat every person like they ha- because they are divine. It, it's an amazing thing. Now, the, my point is... This is why Roman Catholicism then has its view of baptism and the whole sacramental system. It it tears the it it reads everything through the divine spark that's in believers and non believers that is just part of creation. Hmm. Mm. So so this is this is of the the mindset it sounds like that we are not completely dead in our sins and trespasses, but we are just Mortally wounded. That's the oh, official oh, oh. Roman Catholic view. Oh, oh I yeah, got it here. So, so you can't get away. You can't get away from the divine spark. Uh, I think. She, I think it's. It's the. Isn't that Augustinian? That was one of his big errors. I, it you know what, sounds I, like Augustine. For those of you playing the home game, and uh, you have your notepad handy, it's called semi Pelagianism. You can look that up. Google it. Yeah, you got to exactly. You got to spell Pelagianism yeah. right, though, but. Here, uh, you know what? I was just looking this up. They take up. it like a porn site if you misspell it or I something? I have no idea. Why would you even say that? Because oh there was that NASA debacle back like 15 years ago. Where really? If, if you went to like NASA dot, instead of NASA.gov, if you went to one of the I others, was, 
Okay. Anyway, anyway, so dropping that whole issue there and talking about the new life in Christ, uh, the large catechism actually you notice says I didn't this. Say yeah, thank you. Uh, the large catechism says this, uh, but here the devil is busy to delude us with false appearances and lead us away from the work of God to our own works. For there is a much more splendid appearance when a Carthusian does many great and difficult works, and we all think much more of that which we do and merit ourselves. Carthusians, I love them on Star Trek. They were some of my favorite. They were the blue guys with the antennas. Is that right? Uh, no, those are the Cardassians. <laughs> no, wait, wait. Are we talking That's about the Cardassians? I, yeah. I don't even know no, anymore. Now I'm confused. But the point is that we love our own works and we tend to despise God's. Yes. Yeah. Right. And that really is the heart of where we get everything wrong. Oh. Is is when we turn oh. it in on ourselves like that. We call it Pietism, and yeah, yeah. it has other other but theological manifestations. Leading us, leading us back to the the, the fourth question, or the fourth part of, of in the small catechism on baptism. That's why it's. I just totally heard a monkey. Did you guys hear a monkey? Oh, that's Craig. Craig's getting himself wound up okay. again. <laughs> That's so, funny because both my hands are filled with a slinky right now. So I, I, so, you can play the soundboard game. <laughs> oh my goodness! My point <laughs> is, <laughs> sorry. My point is, <laughs> is that in the daily dying and rising, each and every day we kill off that old Adam that wants to depend upon himself, and each and every day rise up in new life, thanking God for what He has done in our lives. Well, it sounds like, since we're pretty much out of time here, that uh, Troy is setting us up for another program here on uh, what? on objective and subjective justification and uh, okay. the doctrine of sanctification also. Now we got to do it, I guess, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to take that up. Um, anyway, Mark, any last shots? Nope, nope. Uh, yes, actually. It, it, it's, it's, again, to understand that baptism is not just a one-time thing. It's the one-time thing that brings your whole life in Christ into eternity. That sounds good. We'll leave it there. Hey, by the way, be sure to subscribe to this program on iTunes, Spreaker, Podbean. Check us out on TuneIn Radio. 200ProofGospel.com is where we reside. Pirate Christian Radio Friday mornings. Uh, 200ProofGospel at gmail.com. Get the app for your Android or Apple device. Did I miss anything? Yeah, I'm always a fan of the Alexa device. Alexa. Alexa, play 200 Proof Gospel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you next time. God's you know peace. how many homes oh. are now going off on 200 200- Proof gospel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of them. Hey, Google. <laughs> <laughs> See ya.